Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, a few days ago, I made a video and I showed you it actually snowed here. Well, that snow all melted and then overnight we got this snow. And now this is really quite unexpected considering we are at the end of March, beginning of April. But there you go. This is what we're living in at the moment. But today what I want to do is talk to you about uh, .NET Core, which is Microsoft's uh, software development kit and runtime that is open source and cross-platform. And because it's open source and cross-platform, we can build programs on the Raspberry Pi in C Sharp, and then actually we can run them on a Windows desktop just by copying the file across. So if you wanna see how to do true cross-platform development using .core .net on a Raspberry Pi compatible with a Windows PC, please let me explain. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna be looking at .NET Core on the Raspberry Pi, and then we're gonna use that to do some cross-compiling and make an app, a console app that works also on a PC. So .NET Core is the cross-platform version of .NET. So .NET, of course, is associated with C Sharp, F Sharp, and to some extent, uh, Visual Basic. Okay, and the, the cross-platform version is good for building websites, services and console apps because obviously if you're doing cross-platform doing the windowing stuff would be very different from let's say on a mac on a windows on linux but however console app services and websites you can do all that with the .NET core it's free completely free in terms of money no licensing fees no cost you have to pay to microsoft and it's open source it's free as in freedom and it's cross-platform with free development tools for windows linux and mac os and it's using the mit and apache 2 licenses so this is a pretty good offering here no strings attached including its open source now when we say cross-platform what do we mean we mean lots of platforms including these ones and some more. In fact, later on, we'll see that Android and iOS are also possibilities here, but we're talking about Linux on ARM 32-bit, ARM 64-bit and Intel 64-bit, then Mac OS on Intel 64-bit, and then Windows on Intel 64-bit, Intel 32-bit or AMD, so x86, 64 and 32-bit, and then ARM 32-bit. So that's quite a range there of architectures, uh, bit size and uh, operating system. So pretty good cross-platform support here. Now, as we said, .NET Core supports Linux on 32-bit ARM. That means it works on the Raspberry Pi. And the good thing is Microsoft provide Docker images. So you get a pre-built development environment without having to worry about installing it all. Uh, and those Docker images support cross-compiling. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to use Docker. We're going to build a C-sharp console application for the Raspberry Pi and run it on the Raspberry Pi. And then we're going to build exactly the same app on the Pi, but it's going to be uh, a Windows 64-bit uh, uh, binary, uh, XE, as it will then turn out to be, which will then run on a Windows desktop PC to make sure that it works correctly. So true cross-compiling going on here. So let's start with the Docker image. .NET has got various versions as uh, you know Microsoft develop it and improve it and uh, bring more uh, features. So .NET Core 3.1 Docker image, what we're going to use, and why 3.1? Because it offers long-term support until the end of 2022. So that's the kind of the LTS version. And this is the name of the Docker image that we want to use. So I won't spell all that out, but yeah, you can see it there. And you basically say Docker pull, and then this is the image name that you want to pull. Now I'm assuming that you're gonna do that on your Raspberry Pi. I've already done it on mine, so I won't show you that part, but we'll go straight on to what happens once you have that Docker image on your machine. Oh, by the way, if you don't know much about Docker, I've got a whole video on using Docker on the Raspberry Pi 4, which really I would recommend that you watch to bring yourself up to speed on how you use Docker on the Raspberry Pi. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a new console app and to do that, we need to make a new directory called make a console app. We go into that console app and then we run this Docker image. We run bash and IT means it's interactive here. And then this is a key thing here. What we're saying here is that the current working directory, which will be console app on our Raspberry Pi becomes the directory slash console app inside of the Docker 
container. And therefore, any files that we create in here will automatically be on our Raspberry Pi. It's kind of like, it's a volume, mine is V for volume. So it's basically a shared space between the container and the Raspberry Pi. And that means we can work on both of them simultaneously. So let's go over to the Raspberry Pi and do these steps. Okay, so here I am on the Raspberry Pi. So we said, first of all, we need to make a directory called console app. We need to go into console app. And now we need to run that Docker program. Okay, so here is the command I showed you. We're running Docker, this uh, uh, .NET uh, image from Microsoft, and we're gonna have the volume mounted as the console net uh, app directory. So let's run that now. So here we are inside of the container, and if we do an ls, we can see there is a folder there, directory called console app, so we can go into that, and we are now inside of the console app inside of our container. Right now we are inside of our container, we need to use the .NET command, which is a console program for .NET, and we want to say new console. In other words, I want to create a new console app, and the .NET program will do everything it needs to do to set up the environment for us to build that. Once that's done, we'll exit out and we'll see that the files that are being created by the .NET command, including program.cs, cs for C sharp, they are in that same console app directory now on the Raspberry Pi, not in the container. So let's do that and see how we're gonna create files inside of the container that will be on our Raspberry Pi. So we do .NET, new console and that will go ahead and the .NET command which comes as part of .NET Core will actually build the stuff we need for a .NET project. And now we exit out of here and we are now back inside of the Raspberry Pi. We're no longer in the console. When we do a C an LS here, we can see that we've got a CS uh, project file because this could be built inside of Visual Studio. And we've also got program.cs. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to modify program.cs. Now, one thing we have to do before we try to change this program is you'll notice that it's actually owned by root. Now, we can either use uh, sudo, sudo to actually uh, do the editing of this program, or we can change the permissions of it. But let's just use uh, sudo uh, nano program.cs. You can use whatever editor you like, including vi or uh, vim. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. Now, the main program starts here. It's a one line program console dot write line write a line to the console what we're going to write hello world and we're going to say here from dot net core to make it our own little program so then we exit out and save that so now we have our own program that's inside uh inside the raspberry pi here and then we want to go back into the con uh container and use the dot net tools to compile that program so we just recall our previous command that will take us back into the container cd into console app and if we now have a quick look at program.cs we'll see it's our version of it now to run that all you need to do is type .net run and it will compile it and run it here inside of the uh, raspberry pi inside of this container there we go, hello world from .NET Core. Now that's all very nice. Now what we want to do, of course, is build a version that can run on a Windows PC. Now .NET has the idea of these RIDs, which is a runtime identifier, and a RID values are used to identify the target platform where the application is gonna run. In other words, if I'm cross compiling, what platform do I wanna compile it for? And here are an example of some of the ones available, Windows 10 64-bit, Windows 10 32-bit, Windows 10 32-bit on ARM, Windows 10 64-bit on ARM. That's very interesting if you're using, for example, the Surface Pro X and you want to build a native 64-bit ARM program, you can do that using .NET Core. Of course, there's also Linux on 64-bit Intel, Linux on 32-bit ARM, and then you've got also uh, OS 10 64-bit Intel, and also Android and iOS are listed amongst um, Microsoft's official list of runtime identifiers. So why have we talked about that? Because we need to include this label, this target, when we do the build for the cross-platform. So these are the commands for building for cross-platform. Now it looks a bit complicated to start with, but actually this is the same command repeated three times. One for Linux ARM, one for Windows 64-bit Intel AMD, and one for 64-bit 
uh, arm. So you start with the .NET command, that's how you build things. You use the publish command now, which is basically saying I want to build a binary that is going to be able to be used by other people. It's going to be a release, so not a debug version. Minus minus self-contained means rather than having loads of DLLs and library files that you have to kind of bundle into the same directory, just build me one exe file that's got everything built into it. So it's in Linux terms would be the same as making it statically linked. In other words, don't want to worry about all the other files I need. Just give me all in one sort of binary. As I've said already, Linux ARM or Win64, etc. And then here you basically want to say, again, publish single file related to the self command. And publish trim basically means make it as small as possible. Strip out any stuff that you don't need. Now, if we run this command one, uh, three times, one for each of these platforms, we will get three versions of this uh, program, our Hello World program, on for these three different um, architectures and different platforms. Okay, so here is the command for running it for Linux ARM. Okay, so we can run that now and that will go ahead and build. Okay, so that's now built. Now we can use exactly the same command, but we can change this here to uh, win-x64. So we're now building an Intel 64-bit uh, version of the same program, but here on a 32-bit ARM Raspberry Pi. And that's now built. And then finally, we can do exactly the same things here for Windows uh, ARM 64-bit. If you want to run this on the Surface Pro X with, of course, the Microsoft SQ1 processor, which is based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. Now, once those are built, you'll find them in the bin for binary release. Netcore Apps 3.1, because remember we're using 3.1, and then there are three directories beneath, beneath that, Linux ARM, WinARM64, uh, WinX64, and then inside the Publish directory folder of each of those, you'll find console apt or console app.exe, which you can actually run. So what we'll do first of all is we'll run this one, the Linux ARM Publish one on our Raspberry Pi, and then we'll copy this one over to my PC, running uh, Windows with an AMD processor actually, and see that it runs there. So we're going to exit out of the container. I am now back on the Raspberry Pi. So we go to uh, bin, release, and then netcore apps. And then we can see the three different directories there. So let's go into Linux ARM and then publish. And in here we have console app. We do a file console app. We can see that it is a 32-bit ARM uh, ELF binary. And now, of course, we can just run console app. And here we are running the app. Hello world from .NET Core. That's running on my Raspberry Pi. Right now I'm going to copy consoleapp.exe from the win directory over onto my PC. Okay, so here I am on my PC. I've got a command prompt open. I've copied that file into my downloads directory. And so now we can run consoleapp.exe. This is the image, the program I generated on the Raspberry Pi. Hello world from .NET Core. So there you have it. I've managed to run a program that I compiled on a 32-bit ARM processor on a Raspberry Pi, and it built me a 64-bit uh, Intel image that I ran on my uh, Windows PC. Okay, that's it. I hope you're all keeping safe with the current uh, world health problems. Uh, we've definitely got snow here. I don't know if that's going to make things better or make things worse, but do keep safe. Uh, and that's it. I'll see you in the next one.